Hey everyone, what's up? <laughs> hey, publicly secret. Uh, so yeah, uh, welcome to the Unrest live stream and like thingy or whatever. But yeah, yeah. See, we are very professional around here. Uh, like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, let me uh, like launch Mumble for a second. Man, we really suck at this streaming thing now that I think about it. Oh, don't join the rock, paper, shotgun server. Be dancing apparently. I I need to know what my push to talk key is. It's Z now. Hey Ratskan, can you hear me? I can hear you. Apparently, I sound like a dinosaur. Let me see what I can do about that. Right. Uh, hmm. So like, but can can you guys hear Ratskan? Like, can somebody in the chat tell tell me if you can hear Ratskan? Uh, I could hear myself, uh, which was actually somewhat problematic because, again, I, I sounded kind of like a dying ghost trapped in an intercom from the 1970s, so... Uh, I, I, I turned down my gain a little bit and hopefully that should make things a little more tolerable. Okay. Okay, let me just post this on my Facebook and stuff too. Let's stop all the football highlights. Uh, this is a nice uh, Pac-Man kind of thingy. Let's see if Facebook. Are we at all at a point where I should uh, post the update, uh, yeah. sir? Yeah, let's post the update. That's the URL, right? Let me just check. That's the URL. Yeah, sorry for the very. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be posting in a moment. I'm actually checking to make sure it's even using the right mic. Yeah, sorry for the uh, rocky start here. It's livestream.com slash chocolate hum. That's what the server is. Spelling chocolate wrong or something. Okay, does this sound any better? Let me see. Seriously, it sounds still like I'm barking instructions through a Top Gun era <laughs> speaker system. I mean, finally, uh, it sounds okay to me. Like, like I'm done. What? And I have some. Like, yeah. Maybe I'm just hard of hearing or something. I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It might just be a way I would transmit it over the live stream. I mean, I think my, I think my audio is going to your computer well enough. Okay, sorry, I'm posting the, the update. Well, I'll, I'll just try to speak not too much. I'll be like a turn-of-the-century child. I'll be seen, but not actually seen, but not heard.
footage for it. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's one uh, for those of you uh, watching this. Uh, that's one of the new features we have. It's like uh, like dynamic changing of resolution without needing to restart or something. Wait, what? Google? Hey, we're getting a strict trickle of viewers, evidently. Yeah. So, so yeah, the first thing that I've sort of worked on and it was trickier than expected was this resolution change, which was, uh, which is what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Oh my god. What mm -hmm. Let me uh, also link the stream to my Twitter. Also, to everyone currently here, I apologize for the fact that my microphone currently sounds like the last dying screams of a Commodore 64. I really don't know what's going on here. So I will be uh, mitigating this by speaking minimally. Yeah, is it better now? Because I just reduced my, my computer's volume to a half. I don't know if that has an effect or something. I'll pop the stream and give it a look. Uh, it's it's perhaps less booming, but it is no less daunting. Okay, how about now? I reduced the volume quite a lot. Give it a shot. Oh, that's actually quite tolerable. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Now I can finally bust out into my song and dance number that that record producer will hear and sign me up. <laughs> hmm. Man, yeah, that's a big problem that uh, always happens. Is that the game uh, slows to a crawl whenever I start live streaming? So while the game actually runs a lot better than this, it's probably because of my laptop. Mm, I might need to shell out for a desktop or something. Oh man, the loading screen is. <laughs> oh no, yeah, nobody gets close to my Bollywood connections. Not in this. Uh, Incarnation. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that loading screen is just uh, completely like I don't know if it's the live stream or something, but that's the first time I'm literally seeing this bug. I have that's absolutely... actually also the first time I've seen this bug. Have we changed anything? No, I don't think so. I have absolutely no clue why that is happening. And you guys will be pleased to know, uh, long-time fans of the stream will be pleased to see that our, uh, Hanu is still a displaced priest. Um, <laughs> we can fix that at any time, it's just, it'll take probably not that long, we just, we've just been working on other stuff recently. Yeah. What the hell is up with this loading screen? Like, I don't even... <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's brand new. We, you are seeing this bug emerge live on television. Yeah. You can tell your grandchildren you were there when <laughs> unrest started wigging the fuck out. Yeah. So I'm starting to think that, uh, like, maybe it's not Josh. Maybe it's just the, the whole live stream kind of setup that causes these bugs to happen. Uh, no, it looks it looks fine. Uh, but see, when we change screens, you're supposed to see like a color in the background, the flag yeah. superimposed under it at a reasonable resolution. What we're actually seeing is what looks like um, like a Jedi Knight era desktop icon uh, stretched yeah. to a resolution that old developers could not have predicted would exist. Yeah, pretty much. 
I'm thinking it's probably related to uh, switching the, the resolution a lot. Like maybe it will, maybe I'll be able to re, re, like repro it. Yeah, I'll fix it. Yeah, that's not not a big deal. Uh, we are actually sort of uh, these loading screens will probably uh, be changed anyway to uh, like something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so we're we're not too worried about this. These this this that the the loading screens are placeholder. Yeah, like Mick, Mick, for example, Mick has a pretty uh, like decent computer, and he can't even see these load screens. It's pretty much instant for him. So yeah, uh, it won't matter much actually. Hmm. Let me actually try to see if this. Uh, So, welcome to any new viewers. Uh, I'm the thankfully no longer dinosaur voiced Ritzkarn. Uh, this is Arvind, who is streaming. You'll see his handsome face in the bottom left. Yeah. <laughs> and today we're showing you our functioning build of unrest. Uh, yeah. I say functioning, you know, our loading screen started glitching out uh, roughly. Yeah. I don't know how long we've been streaming because that's when the bug emerged for the first time. Uh, but other than that, every everything seems to be more or less in order. <laughs> uh, mumble login info. Uh, I think I, I have your yeah. email. I'll go ahead and get that to you. Yeah. Here we have one of the NPCs. Hey Nilaya, what's up? I'm not actually going to talk to her because that might spoil the plot. Then here's like a bunch of other people who will be important. Then there's this guy who's like, oh my god, what the hell? Yeah, we'll fix that. Oh no! <laughs> that was also working before we started the stream. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even. Yeah, maybe it's just the kind of live stream kind of software and stuff. I'm not even sure. But yeah, uh, yeah, we'll fix all that stuff. That's that's a minor kind of thing. Yeah, no, th th this stuff is not cataclysmic. It's just hilarious that <laughs> it has taken this moment to break down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just save this and then. I'll restart the game and see if this bug actually happens. So feel free to start asking questions at any time, viewers. Uh, the primary surface of these streams is to sort of interface with people and, you know, get across what we're doing. Uh, so don't feel like you just have to sort of sit quietly with your hands folded in your lap. Okay, see, so that loading screen works. Yeah, restarting seems to fix it, right? Yeah. Yeah, apparently, I, I think it must have been due to the change in resolution kind of thing. Yeah, that, that will be an easy fix, no worry. I'll just have to, uh, it's programmed in C++, like, like C++ using OpenGL, that kind of thing. Yeah, we, we pretty much use raw OpenGL, as in like no other, like SDL is there, but, it, but that's primarily for input and stuff like that. So all the OpenGL stuff is done by me, yeah, that's the, the loading screen right there. Oh yeah, so, that's uh, yeah. That's another new thing actually. Is that the to uh, the top down uh, moving animations? As in, when you walk just vertically or just horizontally, like there are different animations now. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, two point one. I'm not sure. Like we basically are not using a very what do you call that? Uh, very like high graphical features. So we are aiming for something that just runs at every computer without much of a thing. So 2.1 seems to be a like widely adopted thing where like even laptops can run it. 
otherwise i'm not sure like, like if you wanted to go with like 3.2 or something like right now it's at 4 i think but yeah we can do that it's just that we don't really need any features from that so we're using 2.1 so we have another question, which is, uh, will there be a run button? I don't think we can afford a run sprite. Uh, we may tweak the movement animation, however. We may tweak yeah. or the, the movement uh, movement speed. Uh, this is just what we've got right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm using the keyboard. Uh, click to move isn't really planned right now, but we might implement it uh, depending on how it pans out. Yeah, it wouldn't be too hard, would it? No, I mean, yeah, it, it would actually be uh, sort of tricky because uh, like the, that kind of pathfinding function isn't really uh, uh, applied in the game right now. So I'll, I'll have to add the pathfinding kind of stuff for that. But yeah, it won't be that hard. So I might do it. Yeah, A star pretty much. Yeah, the problem with the, this is that uh, we don't exactly have a tile based system. We are like, we have a sort of uh, like, uh, so this is how uh, this stuff looks, actually looks like when you see it. So as you can see, we don't have very, uh, very much tile, a tile based kind of system. So the common kind of A star isn't really there. I mean, yeah, we can implement a different kind of A star, but, but yeah. Uh, it would it would take some work it wouldn't be as uh, like just the case of you know enabling that kind of thing yeah that's actually a problem like uh, what you are actually seeing is, is is the game at about half the normal speed like it's supposed to run at 60 frames per second but if you notice at, like at the top left hand corner it's actually running at 30 so I think that's partly because of the live stream and stuff I have uh, running around. Usually it's way faster than this. That's floating lady right there. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Now, um. Oh, I completely lost track of my thought. Uh, I is just saying. You know, I, I've I've been moving around uh, in the levels, and uh, the, the, this current movement speed seems to work out pretty well uh, for the most part. I think it might actually look a little bit slower than it is because we're streaming. Like that, they might might be. Um, Pulling that down a little bit, I'm not sure. I don't know. The FPS is that the FPS counter in the top left? There, yeah. Armand. Yeah, it's at the top left. Okay, so perhaps not. Uh, when I I notice that when I record the game, it, it tends to chug a little bit uh, at this point in the build. But uh, evidently not. Um, yeah. Anyway, the point is that's something we'll probably tweak a little bit as we design the game. Okay, I'm here now as well. Hi. Hi, I was wondering about that. Uh, you were uh, muted and deafened uh, in the mobile server. <laughs> it looks like. Yeah, I had to do all sorts of setup again. Everybody, this is Mick. This is the artist. Everyone say hi to Mick. Or don't say hi, he can't actually hear you through the internet. Unless you're actually literally in this mobile server. Which well, you can try, or not. try screaming really hard. Maybe I can hear some of you. It all depends on how close to Estonia you are. Yeah, hi everybody. Hey Mick, what's up? Right, so Mick, um, maybe Mick can tell us a little bit about uh, like his art, his art stuff, like how he does art while I'm uh, busy here, like just standing around. Okay, well. There's not that much to say, but basically everything is drawn in Photoshop and uh, I use a tablet to make it easier. And uh, most of the levels are composed of tile sets, uh, but a few are completely hand drawn as just one picture. But most of the levels are too big for that, so. Uh, I draw 
like big chunks of tiles. Uh, we have a few resources uh, that I call tiles are even a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Like for instance, the houses. But uh, we still call those tiles. But uh, they're all such uh, big chunks, and then we use a program called Tiled to put them together. If uh, someone's more interested in that, then I think Arvin can actually show that. Yeah, actually, that's a thing that like. Uh, which is pretty interesting because I have never done something like this before either is that we are sort of combining uh, hand painted stuff and uh, the like the, the normal tile stuff so every level does end up looking uh, kind of distinct compared to the rest it's not entirely uh, like for example if you look at some RPG maker games that use the default kind of tile set you kind of end up like things end, end up falling in a predictable pattern but in this since the movement actually is in tile based and we use a lot of props here and there so every level turns out to looking a little bit different from the usual levels let me see if I can actually uh, get tile to work Hang on again. yeah I, I think it's a really interesting combination that we're using because it's, it's kind of all hand-drawn, and it is hand-drawn, but we're still using tiles. But they're just really big tiles, they have really irregular edges, and we have a lot of layers of them on top of each other. So it uh, doesn't look like uh, the usual grids that you see in uh, uh, tile games, usually hex grid or isometric grid or something like that. So, uh, to those of you in the stream, uh, if you can see uh, this right now, this is the sort of prototype slums level, uh, which Mick is currently in the process of drawing. Uh, this is still work in progress, it's going to be like recolored for one thing. So, yeah, take it with a pinch of salt, but that's how it's going to look like. Let me see if I can edit it. Yeah, it, I have to recolor it a bunch. Uh, I'm still working on the exact the uh, hues that I should be using and it's also going to get uh, quite a bit more claustrophobic. Uh, I, I still need more houses and everything should be even tighter together. Yeah, so there you can... Uh hey, that's gone. Did you get kicked off? Mama? Hey, so it's that time where uh, Mumble uh, mysteriously uh, self-destructs for me. Yeah, like I don't even know. It's yeah, a standard even, tool. It's, it's uh, free to download on the internet. Uh, so yes, I will you, now be. Uh, does anyone know if you can have groups, team chats, or something? Or maybe we can all uh, go ahead, get off Mumble and get on Skype or something. Yeah, because otherwise it's going uh, to be. You back. can invite multiple people into a Steam chat. Yeah, if you have. Okay, okay we can do Skype then. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, uh, Steam, I guess, hey Mick, yeah, come online on Steam and then uh, Ratskan, can you host that chat? Uh, like over the multiple person thing? Like yeah, I, I could add Mick to it if I have Mick on Steam, which I actually forget if I do. Uh, no, the, the point is you actually just go to the right, uh, to the drop down arrow, you click invite to chat and then oh, you scroll right. down until you find his name. Okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Um, so, oh wait. Yes. Uh, does that mean that the does that mean that the stream just copped an eyeful of our hot fresh Steam action? Do I need to explain to people why my username is currently boyfriend mode? Do I need to explain that to myself? It's that, it's that gearbox thing, right? I remember gearbox games having a boyfriend mode. Like, oh wait, was it? Girlfriend yeah, I'm playing. Uh, I'm not sure. No, yeah, that was it. Uh, in in the game. Uh, we're playing uh, Borderlands 2. I'm playing a character called Gage, and Gage was uh, advertised as being, uh, as having a mode that would allow, like, you know, 
pe- people who have less experience playing FPSs to succeed. And at some point, somebody somewhat foolishly let on that this was in-house called Girlfriend Mode. Which I, I won't go into with that. Personally, I find that kind of annoying. Like, I don't think that's something that they should have put in a press release. I think that's kind of stupid. And so, I was, you know, when I it came time to name my Macromancer, I named it Boyfriend Mode. Because, of course, I'm not a girlfriend. I am somebody's boyfriend, and I am playing Gage. <laughs> and I actually have some of those abilities. <laughs> not because I'm bad at first-person shooters, necessarily, but because I don't really want to give a shit too much, especially on... A server with low connection, so you know, it's like uh, just summon the summon the giant robot to clean things up. Send in the clowns. <coughs> I'm actually waiting on the game of the year edition for this because it's kind of like uh, uh, all the DLC and stuff is just too expensive for like uh, living in India and stuff. You know, like. Like people, like you just mm-hmm. go out and it's like, oh my god, seventy or eighty dollars at this point, all of it. So I'm actually waiting for uh, like the Indian edition to pop up, which which is like the low cost uh, for for the peasants kind of edition. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wait a minute. So do we have any more questions? Uh, Hmm. Yeah, we, we questions should definitely get those in. We've got yeah. 27 viewers. I'm sure somebody uh, has a question about the video game. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, DYV2 asks, do you make that tool or is it standard? It's a standard tool. It's available over at... Available over at... It is free, I believe, app. in fact. Yeah, it's freeware and open source. Not all. Uh, how much writing there is there in chapter 1 compared to chapter 2? It's pretty much equal, right? I mean, it's not more, it's not less. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, honestly, I think some of the later chapters might have slightly more writing uh, involved. Uh, I mean, I, I think chapter, uh, what I'm just going to say what used to be chapter 3 will probably have the most writing just because it's really sort of... Um, because it, that that's the chapter that's... Uh, diverges a little more. It's not really a spoiler uh, because that means nothing to anyone at this point because of how we're renaming the chapters and how we're shifting content around. Yeah. Uh, so another thing, uh, rough guess on how much gameplay time in chapter one compared to chapter two. It's pretty much the same. Like, but at the same time, we don't really uh, like do it like we we have a stopwatch or something and we are like, oh no, it's fifteen. Like, it's forty five minutes here, but it's. 44 minutes here. We don't really do that kind of thing. Uh, also, like uh, in some cases, uh, this is a thing that I, I, I want to say. In some cases, you would have a real quick resolution of chapters. As in, if you want to, you can sort of resolve the chapter uh, pretty easily in like 15-20 uh, minutes. So there are a lot of <coughs> there are a lot of routes through each chapter. Some of them take much longer than others and some of them are like pretty much instant and then in some ca- in some routes you die and then it's like so there's lot there's going to be lots of variation among that. Sorry about the typing. I'm sure you could probably hear that clattering through the steam chat. Ratskan's Magical Punning Adventure DLC. You're, you're implying that the actual game won't have any puns. Like. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so I will say, I don't know if I can think of a single pun currently in the script. I think it messes with my, like, it messes with the, the, the literary dissonance of, I'm trying to write as though what I'm writing is a translation of another language, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm trying not to write something colloquially English, and part of that is less wordplay. Uh, I won't say that I'll keep that policy hard and fast, but it discourages it on my end. Uh, no, I mean, what uh, I think what we will end up doing is that we'll have a pun mode, like, you know, like boyfriend mode, girlfriend mode, in which every uh, <laughs> line of dialogue suddenly, like, is slightly altered to make sure there is a pun in it. I think that's... Yeah, we should look into that definitely. Mm. Or at least like encourage modders to do that. So like before you get to the slash fanfiction mod, 
get the pun not done okay all right what else is there uh, could you give uh, some details on the gameplay of chapter 2 without giving any spoilers so uh, like here's how uh, let me just uh, kind of uh, explain how the structure of the game is going to work uh, <coughs> uh, so there, there there are a bunch of uh, how unrest is structured is that there are a bunch of stories and all of them are slightly intertwined with each other and the overall arc is the uh, like it's suspiciously similar to the kind of usual uh, you are a uh, as in you are a princess and uh, like let's say you 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 know the traditional hero's journey like you get a call to action and then you have a uh, you know yeah basically it's the hero's journey so the second chapter is going to focus on a priest and he will face interesting dilemmas related to uh, like his own faction what they are uh, like you know what uh, like some questionable actions that they take and like he he'll face certain choices about whether to help this guy or that guy or maybe not help at all and then he'll be contacted by uh, certain black market dealers and stuff so there's a lot of potential for uh, intrigue in there i guess uh, ratskar might want to elaborate more on that actually more on specifically uh, i mean like chapter 2 with the priest guy like what what sort of thing are we aiming towards that oh well definitely the thing i'm aiming towards is um muddying what could otherwise be a very simple like oh this faction is good that faction is bad um with the restructuring of the chapters which I won't go too much into because that's still a little thin on the ground but um we're sort of working on presenting various sides of like the the story in various ways and the priest chapter kind of represents the trans a possible transitional point in the player's sympathies where previously like certain factions had seemed uh had seemed noble because they were beneficial to certain kinds of characters but and priest sort of is taking advantage of those institutions but gradually begins to see the shortcomings of them and that's that that's going to be a lot of fun to write So yeah, uh, the gameplay is actually uh, mostly decision making, talking to people, that kind of thing. Uh, there is going to be some exploration and uh, like combat in it, but yeah, the majority of the stuff is just going, like going to people, talking to them, seeing how the entire uh, kind of thing works, that kind of thing. you know because i completed mm. fez i'm i'm really interested in uh, like thinking if like maybe we can have this uh, like we are going to have a library in the game at some point so so i'm in, i'm interested in knowing like maybe we could like invent a fictional naga naga language like naga stock in human language right so it won't be uh, like so the dialogue can take place in the normal common tongue which like we can uh, read in dialogue boxes and stuff but some of the stuff they like it can be in their own tongue you know uh right so let me try to take these questions uh combat uh, you said uh, publicly secret asks you said combat would be like said my spirits could you elaborate for someone who's never played that Uh, so primarily uh, this means the combat will be focused on one on one duels uh, as in uh, so the com- so what it will be is that the um, uh, a majority of the combat encounters will be one versus one in a confined space and uh, and if you die you die that's it like there won't be any game over screen mm-hmm. or anything yeah. uh if you die in combat that's where the chapter ends for your character and 
and then you go on, um, and then the next chapter picks up and there will be consequences for example let's say a priest gets into a fight in a busy public square and he is killed so naturally a lot of people will be shocked uh, like if such a thing happens so that kind of thing will be reflected in the future chapters and a lot of stuff will change depending on that uh, another thing uh, is there a scoring system percentage or any sort of morality system no there's no morality system right there's no paragon renegade or like like you know suave professional that kind of thing uh, there is a uh, mm -hmm. actually instead of a scoring system as in percentage completion what we have is a system called traits in which traits are a combination of uh, your character notes uh, your uh, a rough uh, a rough list of the decisions you've made so far and achievements so there so instead of being a global list like usual achievements are traits are exclusive to one character so if you do something as one character that character acquires a trait and it's exclusive to them uh, some characters will start with a few trait you know uh, like they will start with a couple of traits to give you an idea of their outlook on life but most of the traits will be acquired via gameplay as in what you do how you talk to people if you talk to certain people if you explore that kind of thing so yeah uh, we hate morality systems as much as you do so don't worry about that yeah we won't have any morality systems so did i miss anything uh, is there strategy I involved uh, is there strategy oh, yes. involved outside the decision making storyline uh, strategy uh, could you clarify that like strategy as in real time strategy like or turn based like what's the strategic uh, part of that like i'm not sure if i understood that question uh, like narratively there will be strategy for example uh, like let's say you uh, like let's say your aim in the game is to avoid mass slaughter in combat you know so if that is your aim you will have to strategically think about what kind of politics to play what kind of you know do i be do i intentionally piss off this guy like uh, like let's can't might want to elaborate more on that kind of strategy like on strategy of like yeah strategy like do i need to get some gold to do something no no we don't have that kind of, of strategy yeah, no, or strategizing that. is more if you strategize in game it's 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 going to be more considering your interests and considering what the best ways to attain them are and i don't want to overstate uh the, the depth of that it's not like a game of thrones simulator or like in the crusader kings 2 like a scheme it's mostly just considering which quest lines you want to follow uh which and it, sometimes our quests are more nebulously defined uh sometimes it's not like we have you know oh you know i could do x or i could do y which do i want to do it's it's more like we have options that are inherent and the player can sort of view them and uh, naturally can decide which one to take. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like uh, politicking, you know, playing factions against each other, playing people against each other. That's kind of that's the more kind of uh, strategy that we are going for, as opposed to like either you know strategy in combat or strategy in economy, that kind of thing. Uh, will there be motion capture for the white male protagonist? <laughs> no, I don't think there is. Uh, uh, do the Naga talk with their own accent? Not like adding s to dialogue, but in terms of not understanding the finer points of the language, like Russian speaker not being used to articles. Yeah, that's a uh, like yeah. We will add minor touches to the dialogue. Like for example, Naga merchants will be pretty much uh, pretty well versed 
in human language because otherwise they won't really be able to do business very effectively but other people like let's say laborers for example or farmers or stuff like that they won't necessarily understand the finer points of the naga language so yeah <coughs> Uh, like do you want to elaborate on that ratskan maybe a little bit about the language differences between the two races how you envision the differences between languages oh, how, um yes i, I think the, the naga language is probably i i wouldn't say it's i don't think it's exi- terribly alien uh to a human being i think it it, it somewhat relies on body language you know on on vertical placement of the head and shoulders and but i think otherwise you know it's it's actual like it's it's vocabulary and structure would be not too different than you would expect uh from a human language um you know the naga do have some significant differences from humans in their sort of their community structure well actually maybe i should rephrase that i don't think the naga should have much in their culture their society that would be unthinkable to have in a human culture or society. You know, there was a lot more diversity of custom, uh expectation and values uh in humanity than a lot of people really acknowledge. Like most people sort of think of like the big obvious cultures understood in their broadest terms. Uh you can find somebody somewhere who practices almost anything and doesn't even think about it. Uh so I I I don't think the naga should be um I think if anything the like naga should be different than what maybe you know somebody within the cultural framework of a first world computer gamer would consider odd or unusual um but I I I think it should fall within that range but I don't think it should extend too far beyond that uh because I think at that point uh well I mean honestly it's hard to reach that point even Yeah. <laughs> uh so sorry I I got really off topic there. As far as language goes, um I think of the, the difference between the um the human and the naga language. It won't be the naga language isn't based largely on hissing. Uh naga tongues are more adept than that. Uh that they 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 have uh I mean obviously like the reason snakes make a hissing noise is because that's like the the noise that snakes can make. You know, naga have a sophisticated verbal language. They can speak it's confirmed that they could speak whatever language the the humans are speaking in the game so why would their language sound all that different if they can manage the other tongue yeah yeah i'm actually uh, interested now uh, i'm sort of interested in uh, this angle too as in there might be human scholars who are also versed in naga languages so like that that kind of oh, thing absolutely. is absolutely i mean yeah i think you know i want to spoil it but i'm pretty sure we have at least one human character who speaks the naga language <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, in fact, yeah, well, one, of those, it. yeah one of the backers proposed a really interesting idea, like, you know, a human naga supremacist. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh right, so wait, we, was we it a human naga this... supremacist or a naga human supremacist? Uh, no, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, I think it was the other way around. Yeah, there was a naga scholar who was quite enamored with humans, right? Yeah. Oh. So mm-hmm. you, so with his study he got to the point where he was slightly deranged and he was like no yeah the human supremacy stuff really is accurate you know stuff like that so that kind of stuff might be interesting to have in the actual game hmm oh, wait a minute we missed one question uh, what kind of battle system are we looking at will there be stats like attack defense health leveling up etc uh no there won't be leveling up and there won't be uh, there will be stats obviously but not ex- not really visible to you or changeable via armor or via grinding stuff like that uh, or the combat that will happen will be very uh, like sometimes it will be unexpected sometimes it, like you will like you will get the feeling that a certain uh, brawl is coming but you won't necessarily uh, like be able to do any like you won't be able to pick up like okay let me wear plate armor here and let me carry the plus 5 sword of fire in my right hand that kind of thing 
yeah, we don't really have much of an equipment or uh, that kind of stuff in the game. I think you missed the question about puzzle roll, so... About the puzzle? Yeah. Uh, let me puzzle. see. I don't think we really have any puzzles planned, per se. No, I mean, yeah, we, it's not really the kind of game where it's like, okay, you have to, uh, like, solve this puzzle to get to the next area. Yeah, that kind of stuff won't really be there. Right. Uh, we actually, we, you know, I, I would say it's impossible. We did have a puzzle in an earlier draft of uh, Chapter 1. Um, I think we actually still have a, it a little bit. Like, we come to think of it. Um, no, actually, I think we, we, we did finally erase it. Uh, yeah. Every so often, we come up with an idea to put in something which uses the dialogue system rather than, like, cutting away to a different screen to, like, you know, where you're doing a diagnosis or solving a mystery or something, and uh, we never have gone through with it. But I wouldn't say it's impossible that that will happen at some point uh, during yeah. the, the process. Uh, so, Ken... Tauroi asks, so I won't be walking around looting random peasants out while they stand there staring at me. No. In fact, yeah, chapter 1 has pretty uh, damning consequences if you do manage to loot a certain house. Like, I won't spoil beyond that. But, yeah, you won't be able to loot, like, just you won't be able to go inside a random guy's house and just, like, ransack his entire place while they stand there smiling. I think it's you. safe I think it's safe to say that while in many cases you will be able to just jack stuff from people, like jack people's private possessions, there won't be any circumstances where it won't be understood as theft. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we do have an inventory, and you uh, what kind of items the player will carry depends on the characters. For example, the first character is a little girl, so she will have a couple of toys, then her father has a certain business making certain articles, so she would have that. Then stuff that you find and collect around the village that kind of thing so yeah there will be uh, like uh, there will be a lot of varied items that you can carry wait did the stream just die? uh the stream did die yes okay but it's back though oh all right so this is how the inventory will end up looking so th these are the uh, characters uh, the item slots that is uh, like we aim to have uh, generally 12 items per ca per chapter in total. Mm. Wait, is there a stream problem? Like, oh right, it's back. <coughs> mm. So, <coughs> I mean, <coughs> uh, hang on a minute. Sorry. Uh, no, I mean, uh, usually you would, you won't need to carry more than 12 items because that's how we will uh, kind of arrange the levels and such. So you won't really have like a lot of items just which you can just carry around and stuff. Uh, so if you will have 12 items, but but each of them would have their own unique, uh, like maybe most of them will result in at least, no, I mean, no, that's not, yeah, multiples of same items don't count as, like different items, they're the same item. Uh, there isn't much enchanting as such because there isn't really magic in the game. It's like, I mean, there is like there is some magic, as in there's a vendor in the street who's like, you know, who's like, oh, I'm into black medicine. Do you want some like you know top secret treatments kind of stuff? But there isn't really a stats-driven magic kind of thing. So, like, when you will actually have items, uh, you will, yeah, you will click on these, uh, yeah, pretty much all quest items. They do give you certain uh, stat benefits, like minor stat benefits, like maybe one item will let you walk slightly faster, the other will, like, increase the, uh, the attack a little bit, but they're not, like, they won't radically change the way you play the game. They're mostly quest items with, and almost all of them result in some minor uh, like dialogue event or some event happening that wouldn't usually have happened if you did not have the item. Uh, 
uh, there will be merchants uh, you might be able to uh, trade for certain items however trading won't be a majority like you like the uh, eco economy as such in the game is a uh, slightly different kind of beast compared to what you usually have as in uh, there is only this one time where the economy really uh, like comes into effect which is in when you are as the priest and you have to go out and collect donations uh, otherwise there isn't really any eco economy as such like maybe Ratskan wants to elaborate more on that yeah th th there's there's no um, there's not like a shop where you would sell things for money and the main reason for that is that money intrinsically the only, the only value of money in an RPG market let me sorry let me start over it it's kind of early for me uh, this didn't build up the right steam so the idea of an economy is the idea that we want gear that is better so we take the gear that is not better and we sell it and we use the money to buy things that are nice or buy things that are useful that's not a factor in this game you are you're cons it's not abstracted to the point where you're buying new shirts like ten times a day and selling random things you find to afford it your fiscal concerns in the game will be roughly will be equivalent to the fiscal concerns your character would actually have so if you get money and there are a few instances in the game where like you will be collecting money or you will be looking for money you will be putting that towards the ends of your character not towards buying things necessarily uh, so for example as the priest you collect donations uh, but the question is are you going to use those donations like what are you going to where are you going to funnel that those assets you won't necessarily put them towards something you get like a mechanical upgrade for you won't be like thank you for your donation to the church citizen we bought maces plus three for all of our followers no. though that's that's not how it is it's more like you're considering what is my character's what is the end goal of my character where am I where am I gonna scroll this way to and there will be several chapters where money is not a factor at all and when money is a factor again it's not like your gold pieces counter is going up it's that you're actually getting an item that is a sack of money yeah uh, we're removing that be... level of like yeah. uh, no i mean actually rocketeer right. makes a good point as in uh like for bribing people like you could use money to bribe people and i think we will have a couple of instances where you can actually do that Uh, RPG Lover 606 asks, since this is primarily a character-driven game, can we expect to see the character evolve throughout the game? So, you play five different characters in the game, and I would say that many of them can undergo sort of an emotional change. It's it's a lot of it, especially a lot of like what the character is actually feeling and thinking, is up to you as the player. Uh, we don't enforce that as much. Uh, so and you know so depending on which choices you make and how your conception of your character may change? Uh, the answer is yes. And I would say that NPCs that exist throughout the game, some of them will go through transformations. Um, ideally speaking, which will be clearly represented, uh, some of them at, at the very least will go through transitions that are, you know, that I have in my head in the background. Sorry, I'm hiccuping now. Uh, but I, I believe that ideally, yes, you will be able to sort of witness those. Um, so yeah, uh, um, who had asked this? Uh, like the dialogue, uh, the di like somebody had asked, uh, what um, Gurok had asked, what does the conversation look like right now? Uh, so this is uh, a, a case of the typical conversation which you will have. Uh, uh, so here's how it works. This is the character talking to you, uh, the, the character that is visible. This is their name. In this case, they're your mother. So they're like, yeah. The, then you have these three meters. Uh, this green one is the friendship meter. This res, this blue one is the respect meter, and this red one is the fear meter. So what is generally? Uh, so we generally try to depict our relationships between characters as uh, with, with the constraints of these three meters. 
so in this case your mother is on pretty friendly terms with you uh, your mother is like yeah there is a bit of mutual respect but there isn't really much fear because like you don't really fear your uh, parents then what you uh, then this is what she is saying to you at the moment then this is uh, one thing which we are which we allow you to do is that you can open your journal at any point during a conversation so for example i have opened this journal journal and i can uh, when this will be filled i can check up on what exactly are my quests and such before uh like to achieve something like in case you forget where you are basically so you can open your journal at any time and look at uh, where you are what you are doing that kind of thing then these are the uh, reply options and each reply option is also accompanied by a sort of tone so so we want to avoid stuff where where like the dialogue option says okay and what shepherd actually says is okay you can punch me in the dick now you know or maybe like another option where shepherd is like no like the dialogue option says no and like what shepherd actually says is no and then he punches the other guy in the face you know so we want to avoid that kind of thing so <coughs> so that's how is you you will usually have five up to five uh, reply options available to you maybe six sometimes depend depends but yeah so if you select something then like the the next dialog comes in and, and it's pretty much the same thing so yeah that's where we are at the moment with the whole kind of a uh, conversation thing yeah you are uh, like in a like you won't really notice the effect of this uh, friendship respect fear meter in a single conversation it will be more like uh, when you repeatedly interact with a character you will get a sense of how your relationship is evolving with that character for example if you slowly start to antagonize someone like over the course of the chapter you will notice that they are starting to loathe you more and maybe respect you less that kind of thing uh so yeah we did not end up raising enough for the character portraits which is why we have sprites but they no problem yeah they look pretty good actually like i don't mind really uh a side effect of this is that a uh, useful side effect that is is that you actually know like when you end the conversation uh you know that okay this is the sprite i was talking to so so in a way it's an like it's a nice benefit to have because you'll never get uh, confused there wait a minute was it this person i was talking to or was it that the other guy you know uh, how many lines of code now that's an interesting question let me uh, have a minute let me check i'll open up my freeze ray and then i'm just source and then this oh that's quite hard actually about the sprites being in the conversation uh, dialogue screen actually we talked about the fact that we can uh, zoom in a bit on them as well so there we can actually draw them about twice as big so you can see the characters a bit closer it's uh, not quite the portraits but you can actually see them closer yeah uh have a minute so uh it's about uh 1. Point, it's about 1.61 mb of code 256 files uh i don't know the exact word count just yet but not really uh yeah that's not counting external libraries like if you see the external libraries are he here it's like sdl external open gl external So whatever is it in that crab folder is probably been written by me. Uh, does your mother have a name? Wait, do you mean? I mean, yeah, she has a name, I guess. <laughs> But yeah, 
yeah she has a name obviously but the reason we are actually using the the title mother as opposed to uh, like her name is to signify the uh, the relationship because that's kind of more important than knowing her yeah name. yeah uh tire time out of the game i think it's about 3 days like well we may or may not uh the main game takes place within about 3 days i think is what we usually come down to Wait, did I just get disconnected or something? Uh, why do you ask? No, I mean, because you suddenly stopped talking, so I was like, wait. Uh, no, I just, uh, came in with, um... Oh, I, I said was, um, that... The time on the game, I think we, we agree, is usually about three days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, uh... Like time passes between the chapters and in the chapter. Like in the chapter, it's not as like it's it's not like there's a clock ticking on the top right hand corner and you have to like do stuff within this certain time limit. But yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's a fair point actually. Uh, Man, this is really. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I'll let you know about the uh, this uh, the lines of code and such in the next stream because right now I'm just having trouble opening up anything really. My laptop is just probably. Do we have a do we have a an endpoint for the stream? Wait, what did you say? Do we have an end point for the stream? Do we have a, an end time? Uh, yeah, we've been going on for about one hour and like two minutes. So yeah, let's say uh, yeah, pretty much like when you guys like run out of questions or something like let's say in fifteen minutes we'll end this. So yeah, final fifteen minutes. If you guys have any questions or anything, or maybe you want to like. Like if you don't have any questions, then this would just be that's can't making like snake puns for the for the rest of the stream. Mm -hmm. So you better have some questions. Mm -hmm. I always try to be frank and honest with women. <laughs> in the boneyard, I'm frank, and in Reno, Reno, I'm honest. Oh no. <laughs> When the Delta Lux, they said me a steak, I said this tastes funny. They said it's because we're eating a clown. I had a person. <laughs> What's your... It's kind uh, of... Hey, no, buddy. I won't tell the bear joke again. Uh, in the latest uh, spoiler warning video, um, we did Slender. And I may or may not tell a joke involving bears, which may or may not be spun out for most of the video's length. Uh, so about unlocks and achievements. Uh, we do have traits which are like a cross between your uh, abilities, character notes and achievements. So there will be lots of unlocks and achievements. Well, for each chapter, there will be uh, like there will be certain character traits which you can unlock depending on your actions and if you explore the area, if you find a certain item, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so. How many lines of code do you churn out each day? I'd heard you don't sleep ever. Yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes I, yeah, like, when when there's a certain feature that needs to be coded, and I'm like halfway through, then I don't really like. I don't know. Maybe I just like. Maybe it's because I'm not really very old at the moment, so maybe that's why. But but yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, lines of code per day. I'm not really sure. Like it's probably about. Like. Uh, I don't know, maybe a thousand, I'm not sure, 500, I have absolutely no clue, like, but like in terms of classes and objects, I usually code about, uh, like three, three objects or classes per day. So like, so like yesterday I was, uh, yesterday I was coding support for traits and stuff. So I, so I coded almost the entire trait menu then I coded uh, the ability to invoke traits from triggers 
and then the actual trait visual support for the visual glyphs and stuff like that so it's 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 pretty variable it's not like i'm uh, like you know like a certain kind of like okay this is the number of lines i will code but yeah some days i actually code in quite a lot like i remember uh, in will fight for food uh, yeah like i remember in will fight for food i converted the exe from sdl to open gl in like 4 or 5 hours So I just pretty much wrote the entire Opal GL backend, which you are actually seeing on this uh, for like uh, like four or five hours. So yeah, that was pretty. So yeah, it varies usually. Like if I'm like determined that I'm listening to something like the Rocky soundtrack or something, you know, really motivating stuff. So then I can pretty <laughs> much do anything. I think you know. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, Golden light starts pouring off of you. <laughs> all the music starts playing. You just start typing rapidly. Your computer's smoking. Yeah. Like I, I become like super Saiyan, and my hair become blonde. That kind of thing. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, uh, what's on your to-do list for this game? Right now, it's mostly bug fixes, support for uh, like like the advanced kind of trades kind of thing. uh and then it's a bit it's a bunch of scripting and then uh like because i recently played and completed like i 100% did fez so i'm recently so now i'm thinking of including a different naga language like a written naga language as opposed to a spoken naga language so yeah uh so the one of the benefits of uh, being a small team and being independent is that we can pretty much work on what we want uh and i can like i can just pretty much go like hey make work on this hey that's can't work on this it's like a so it's like uh like it's pretty f- like uh fluid as opposed to yeah don't worry about it yeah, yeah once you see it in action it will be uh, pretty simple like that because right now what we have is this like this is where the trades will be shown so it's, so it's not anything complicated as such it's just really simple stuff So don't worry about it too much. Yeah, it's not really anything complicated or as such. Yeah, it's just very. So yeah, basically, uh, the to-do list it pretty much keeps changing. For for Mick and Ratskan, it's pretty much constant. They just have to uh, draw stuff and write stuff respectively. Uh, but for me, it's pretty much what needs to be done because, uh, like. uh like i'm th- trying to think of an analogy here like if mick and ratskan are the bricks then i am the cement that kind of thing hmm. i'm not sure if that's the right mm mm-hmm. yeah that's a that's a, yeah, that's one way of putting it yeah that's a really bad way of putting it but whatever <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so say so yeah, my to do list is pretty uh, fluid it changes like depending on depending on what's needed really Basically, you spend a lot of time telling us what to do as well, of course. Yeah, that's that's actually a big problem. Like now that we have become uh, slightly more popular than what we were before, uh, suddenly I'm spending a lot more time responding to emails, responding to, uh, responding to financial stuff, and then like some web some website stuff, you know. So it's like, yeah. I kind of wish I had a like you know business kind of guy who would take care of all that stuff. So I would just code. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much a PR person. Yeah, a producer. Yeah, actually, yeah, producer would be a much better way to put it. Yeah. Currently, because I'm actually the programmer, the PR person, the producer, and like. Uh, Ian does the scripting. Uh, Mac actually left the team yesterday because he is working on his other project, and that's kind of uh, taking like a lot of his time. So now we actually only have four active members as opposed to five earlier. So Ian and Mac were doing the scripting. So so there. So my job was to actually program the interface for the scripters. So like if you see this dialog, that's stuff that the scripter has put in, but. uh but the script the the programming interface for the scripters that stuff that i have coded 
there's basically like two layers between like the actual player and like me you know that kind of thing uh, like we use uh, this thing called it's like this xml notepad editor what what the hell is it called it's called xml notepad like it's it's pretty basic since most of the scripting stuff is actually data entry as opposed to like actual scripting so so what happens is that i have code done all the hard work in the code like i like obviously i have, have like scripting is hard work too but uh, i have done the implementation part now all the scripters have to do is just data entry so they have to enter data for okay what's the dialog what's this so so it's actually more it, it's actually a cross between like the scripting stuff is what i have implemented and what they are doing is database management basically so we have a lot of ta tables for the because that's usually a big problem in rpgs because let's say you have a platform game so what will happen is that you can just have like in the code like when you finish the level you're like hey con congratulations for finishing the level so you don't really need a underlying framework for that but once you have an rpg so then suddenly you have like five characters in a level and like maybe even 10 or 20 and then you have uh, like 50 different levels and you have a certain sequence which the player can sort of traverse uh, not exactly linearly so so yeah that that kind of stuff becomes very hard to manage if you don't have a proper consistent framework for that so once i actually programmed this framework it it made more sense to have this as a database as opposed to a actual scripting kind of stuff so yeah to uh, let me actually uh, see if i have some comparison uh let's go to the project fridge will fight for food less events So yeah, if you actually see the uh, so this is the stats for Will Fight for Food, which is my previous game and was a much smaller game than what Unrest is. Uh, Will Fight for Food has 320 script files. So this means that uh, there were 320 files of dialogues, 320 different character events that could happen. And so and if and Unrest is probably going to end up like. Uh, uh like at least four or five times as big so when you have like more than a thousand files if you don't have a proper framework and like a method of storing uh these events then you're going to end up with a big buggy mess which you cannot possibly make sense of uh butterscotch hammer asks mm. any particular reasons for picking xml i prefer yaml uh probably because of the parser because at at the time i started this uh rapid xml was the fastest parser available uh so yeah i'm actually impressed with uh rapid xml because uh it it parses stuff so fast and like let's uh, like you saw the loading times for unrest and such so let's actually see how many files this stuff has to parse so like there's anims characters events There's one file in fonts, then there's two in this, and levels and shaders. So there's uh, at the moment there are ninety five, uh, about a uh, hundred files, XML files already, and we're just uh, like we're uh, done in the chapter. Uh, so so you can imagine uh, that there are a lot of text files to uh, uh to parse so in in that case speed is quite important like especially if you are uh, dealing in the magnitude of a uh, hundreds of files because even 1 millisecond more for each file can add up to a lot so so yeah that's the speed is the primary reason why ml is a bit more readable but at the same time uh i have not quite uh, like the way we write xml it's pretty much uh, like readable and then uh, it's not all of them not all of them are scripts you know it's like most of them are actually layout files so for example each of this uh, whatever you are seeing like the layout of this map 
and the layout of this pause menu. So all of this is pretty much done via XML. None of it is hard coded. And like that's one of the kind of main selling points of the game as in uh, you can mod pretty much anything. So yeah, so when you when you are starting this, like when you, let's say we are loading the main menu right now. So the main menu has this one menu, then each of them have their own separate menus, you know. So there are, so there are a ton of stuff to write. So in that case, performance kind of becomes very important because, uh, yeah, hang on a second, let me show you the map. Yeah, this is the map. It's actually still work in progress. It's not 100% done. So it will look, so it will end up looking better than what we have right now actually. But yeah, it's a top down view of the whole farms and stuff region. <coughs> but yeah, basically, you know, like, that's kind of the reason why I don't really uh, enter into a lot of programming arguments because like you could end up um, uh, like you can end up like there are advantages to both really it's not really a correct answer uh, do you extend upon uh, butterscotch hammer asks do you extend upon the functionality of TMX and add your own functionality on top of it if so you could give some examples of it yeah we pretty much do that actually uh, a lot of the stuff is uh, for example, there are uh, we define these collision rectangles through this uh, uh, this col these collision polygons through this. So that's so we so to, to do this we kind of have to add some custom code depending on how tiled handles polygons. And then there is uh, prop layers. Props are like uh, parts of the level, but you can. Uh, come in both ahead or behind or to the sides of them so so to add those prop level layers we do have some certain uh, different uh, we do pass different parameters to tiled so yeah there is a bunch of custom code involved in dealing with tile it's not it's not just a fixed so for example if you have this level uh, this slums level so as such it won't go into our game it would need to be like certain layers would need to be added certain parameters would need to be changed before it would be processed like before it our game could read it so yeah there is a lot of custom stuff involved one which in which which one aspects about the game would right. you say makes it unique from other RPG like games something which we haven't seen in any other game or any, very less of. Uh, for me, it would probably be uh, the character development and how we are handling the multiple kind of approaches. Because what I think we are doing is uh, is that each character can mm, uh, like each chapter can end up in like vastly different ways compared to like each ending is very different from each other. So what uh, like RPGs nowadays usually have is like there will be four or five endings, but most of them would be like you know pretty similar to like the usual. Uh, there will be variations of a single ending that is not really very different stuff. So like Ratskan might want to elaborate more on that, like on the what do we well, do differently part. Well, as far as what we do differently, I like that we have multiple perspectives. And I like that we don't create a force. That means that we can we can avoid having a force that is like a protagonist force and a force that's an antagonist force. It's not the Reb plucky rebels versus the evil empire. It's not all the corrupt bastards who murdered your family versus the versus you and your party of adventurers. It's not the evil demons versus the Templars. It's a bunch of people who have a bunch of interests, who do some good things, and who may be bad people. And I like being able to explore that. I think that might be, um, we might be getting to about the time where we wrap up. 
Yeah. As far as uh, time goes. Yeah, basically, uh, yeah, we do. Uh, what I would like to say is that we uh, we are not really uh, like it's not really a revolutionary. It has never been done before kind of thing. It's more like a evolution of sorts. Like we have removed certain elements which we uh, think are really superfluous to the idea of an RPG. For example, an economy and like the whole idea of buying better pants and shirts. And we have added on uh, like. Like most of the like the attention to detail, I think has has gone to the plot and the environments, which I think are like way more important compared to some of the other like stuff. I think <laughs> for me it seems like uh, most other RPGs are first they made uh, basically the gameplay system and I don't know inventories and the economy and how things work and then tack the story on but for ours it feels like exactly the opposite we're, we're making the story and then uh, making things gameplay wise so the story would work at least that's how it feels to me yeah So yeah, uh, another question will be, uh, there is no online multiplayer, uh, uh, you can't actually bend the elements as far as I am aware. Uh, yeah, polygon collision detection, yeah, we have like, sorry about the noise, continue. I think somebody is typing. I... Oh no, no, sorry, that was, um, I, I had to do something back. Oh, right, right. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a better, like, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, what, what, like, usually mobile platforms have a lot more, uh, like, they have a lot more constraints, like, you know, uh, so it, it is actually very uh, probable that unrest would, like, as it is right now, it would end up running like ass on mobile. Yeah, there's probably very little doubt about that. So, yeah. I mean, mobile requires a mobile is a whole different set of challenges, and I and I have not really ever you know uh, like programmed for mobile before, so, so I wouldn't know much about it. But yeah, collision detection is all CPU, like which so with, this means that you cannot really have like n number of polygons. That would be kind of tricky. Then like what we usually do is that we have a sort of optimization algorithm before the actual polygon collision detection takes place. As in, like first we check using the bounding rectangles, and then we do a broad region check on top of it. So yeah, the whole idea is to minimize the number of convex polygon collisions that take place. So yeah, let's uh, let's say we are in the final five minutes. Uh, so if you have any remaining questions, now would be the time, and then we'll wrap up the whole unrest presentation thing like I hope my programming talk doesn't really uh, bore you or anything like, like because like that's pretty much all I have to talk about being a programmer and stuff I mean if I were someone famous like uh, let's say if I were Jonathan Blue I would talk about oh yeah the game's press sucks and you know that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> Publicly secret. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we might be entering into slightly uncomfortable territory there, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I think we've accomplished just about all we're going to meaningfully accomplish today. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's wrap it up now. Uh, thanks, all of you guys, for. Uh, like attending and like hope to see you next month mm -hmm. yeah thank you everybody bye <laughs>